the quality of our decision making is proportional to the decision making models that we use and the ability to match them to the appropriate situation. This short video explores the decision making models currently used in healthcare and aims to offer an introduction to the optimal way of matching these models to the context with the final goal of improving patients' outcome. When we think about decision making, we refer to the process of making choices, usually after thinking about several options. The classical study of decision making has relied on studies conducted in control environment, usually involving professionals or students, with all the information available without significant time constraints. An interesting question to ask us is how do we make decision? When people are asked how they decide, the answer has usually three main common themes. The three themes in the answer are usually about gathering information, generating options, and then choosing an option. From the 80s, scientists studied how people make decisions and perform cognitively complex functions in demanding real-world situations. Studies were conducted on firefighters, police officers, soldiers, surgeons and doctors. The name that the scientists gave to this area of study was naturalistic decision-making. Scientists in this branch investigate how people use their experience to cope with challenging conditions. Challenging conditions triggered by time pressure, uncertainty, vague goals, high stakes, organizational constraints and team coordination requirements. One of the leading scientists in this field is Gary Klein, cognitive psychologist. Gary Klein uh, discovered that experienced decision makers recognize patterns but they usually do not compare options and evaluate uh, the option by imagining how uh, the options would play out. Challenging decisions involve uncertainty, many of the facts may be unknown, complexity, there can be many interrelated factors to consider, high risk consequences, the impact of decision may be significant, alternatives, there may be various alternatives, each in its own set of uncertainty and consequences, and there could be interpersonal issues. You need to predict how different people will react. In addition, in real life, there is a constant uh, dynamism in decision making. The individual assess the environment, identify appropriate action, take action, reassess the outcome of the actions, and the cycle restart. Military pilots have developed uh, this uh, order loop and it is a cycle of observation, orientation, decision, action. During the observe phase they collect current information from as many sources as practically possible. During the orient phase they analyze the information and use it to update the current model of reality. During the decision phase, they determine a course of action, and during the action phase, they follow through on their decision. During the orient and the side phase, the decision making could happen uh, using uh, different models, recognition primed, rule based, comparison options and consequent choice, or creative model. Another interesting model of decision making is the one developed by Dave Snowden, who is a researcher in the field of knowledge management. He called his framework Kinevin from a Welsh uh, word that means environment. In this framework work, there are five decision making contexts of domains. Two of the five domains are considered ordered. In these domains, cause and effect are known or can be discovered. Other two of the five domains are instead unordered. In these domains, cause and effect can be deducted only with hindsight or not at all. 
The fifth domain, called disorder or confusion, is when there is no clarity about which one of the other domains apply. Out of the five domains, the order one are called simple, the second order domain is complicated, then there are the unordered domains that apply to unordered situations, so there is the uh, domain that is called complex, and the fourth domain is the chaotic domain. The fifth one, as uh, we said before, is disorder, and when there is uncertainty about which one of the other domain applies. The simple domain is the domain of the nones nones. Means that there are rules, the situation is stable, and the relationship between cause and effect are clear. An example in our uh, setting is uh, patients presenting with a simple pneumothorax. A simple rule allows us to treat him effectively. Evidence of pneumothorax on the chest X-ray treated with chest strain insertion. The second of the order domain is the complicated one. It is the domain of experts and uh, is the domain where there are known unknowns. In this domain, an example of decision-making that falls into this domain is a patient uh, presenting uh, with secondary pneumothorax, multiple comorbidities, anticoagulated uh, with warfarin and extremely high INR. In this setup, there are no clear-cut rules that uh, can be applied, but expert judgment could um, determine what is good practice. We enter then the first of the unordered domain, that is the complex, and in this domain uh, resides unknown unknowns. An example in our uh, uh, setting is a situation where there are multiple casualties uh, presenting to uh, a trauma center after a major incident. The fourth of the domain is the chaotic one. Uh, it does domain where cause and effect are unclear. The situation is too confusing to wait for um, understanding. And uh, the action taken in this context need to um, aim at establishing order. Experts in high stake situation use pattern recognition. The order loop, observe, orient, decide and act is a helpful model to manage decision making in rapidly evolving situation. The Kinevin framework helps choosing a decision making strategy appropriate for the situation. And finally, some resources to um, expand the knowledge in this area. Highly recommended the paper written by David Snowden and published on Harvard Business Review, A Leader's Framework for Decision Making. The classic book, uh, Safety at the Sharp End, a guide for, to non-technical skill, written by uh, Rona Flynn and Hal. And finally, Source of Power, uh, written by uh, Gary Klein. Thank you for listening.